hard to imagine a livelier town than Tayville, even in winter. Oh, the streets get icy, and the traffic slows down, and you won't find people out more than they have to be. But otherwise, life moves along as busily as in any Ottawa Valley town, or for that matter, as busily as anywhere. People live and die, marry and have children, get sick and get well. They make friendships and break them, dance, play games and have parties. You'd feel right at home. But by far the most popular pastime, at least for the majority of Tayville men, is the ancient and honorable game of curling. They say only a Scot can enjoy sliding 40-pound blocks of granite across the ice. But though we're not all Scots, we enjoy the game and the arguments that go with it. My name's Roberts, and I'm a lawyer in town. Most evenings, I'm down here, playing vice skip in Charlie Jackson's rink, or just watching the others hard at it. That day in particular, I had a problem. We had a game coming up against Johnny Durham's rink. Johnny's the skip, one of the best curlers going. He and his rink were out to take the cup from us. And we were in trouble. Despite the cheery smile and wave, I was worried when I left the ice. Two of our men hadn't shown up, and I'd heard a rumor there was trouble between them. Oh, Charlie. Any news yet? They haven't turned up yet. Did you phone? I phoned Henderson's wife, and she said he was in the field and wouldn't be back. And McNair? Nobody home. Hope nothing's wrong. There may be. They knew they had a curl this afternoon. You would have thought they would have telephoned or sent a message. Let's have a drink. I can't imagine McNair quarreling seriously with anyone. Well, I've known Henderson for a long time. He has an awfully stubborn streak in him at times. You're on, Jackson. Ice number two. Okay, thanks. Well, it'll be a miracle if we win tonight without them. Perhaps I should have run out to the farm and had a chat with Henderson this afternoon. Trees are pretty important in the valley. Almost every farmer has a piece of land where he cuts his firewood. Some even spend the winter cutting logs to sell in town or to ship to the pulp mill. It becomes a serious matter when someone feels his trees are being stolen. As it happened, Henderson and McNair had been arguing for some time, and the whole thing was about to blow up. Mac. Well, I don't know. I think he's down at the barn someplace. He is, is he? Anything wrong? Alex, you filled the corn bucket. Full? Yeah. Mm. Oh? Yes. Yeah. Nice stuff. Bill, you filled the wood box? Yes. Right up, full? Yes. That's good. You'll get a quarter and Ollie can get mm. 50 cents. I did this much work as he did. <laughs> McNair! All right, you boys. Better run along. Hey, McNair, are you going to pay up? I made you a good offer. 
What kind of an offer is that? Four hundred dollars for all those trees. Man can't talk sense to you. Perhaps you'd rather settle it in court. Hey, come back here. Wait. McNair, you listen to me. Hey. says he's going to sue me for cutting his trees. Well, Mr. Roberts will take care of that for both of you. I'm going in to see him right now. I don't know what is good into Alfred. I've never seen him act so stubborn before. Mr. Roberts. Mrs. Gorney called. Motor will? She wants to change it. She's already changed it several times this year. I told her that, but she still wants to speak with you. Well, have her come in next week, will you? Oh, Mac, you're a rather unpopular man, deserting your rink like that. By the way, Henderson didn't show up either. If I'd known that, I would have been there. Why? Something up between you? It's that piece of land on the scarce land, the back of the second concession. We've both been cutting trees there for years and selling it for firewood. Now he says it's his land. I see. He says he wants a thousand dollars. I haven't taken a third of that this year. How about other years? I've taken quite a bit. But we really don't know where the division line is. If it's where Henderson says it is, would you owe him a thousand dollars? I've offered him four hundred, but he wouldn't take it. Oh, he'll come round. He's gone to see that new lawyer, Mr. Young. All we can do is see how deeply you're involved. Hello. This is Robert speaking. Yes, I represent him. Mm-hmm. How long will it take you to get there? Uh, we'll meet you there. Thank you. Goodbye. That was Mr. Young on the telephone. They've surveyed the lands, and now they're claiming that the dividing line runs farther into your field than either of you thought at first. We're going out to have a look. If they're right, Henderson has a strong case. The line goes from the tree here, across to the post on the left, and then out to the county road. That means that Mr. Henderson owns everything from the line across. That's right. That's fine, Harold. Thanks. OK, Mr. Young. Good day. Good day. We always thought the path was the dividing line. Well, that's neither here nor there. We have the surveyor's report. Alf, you know this is as much surprise to you as it is to me. Let's get out of the cold. This must have been some place. My dad's grandfather built it in 1830, his first home. Well, let's get back to business. Mr. Roberts, surely this situation is clear enough. I don't think anything is very clear. We have a surveyor's report, which I may challenge. The pathway line may stand up. Not in court. Anyway, Mr. McNair prepared to meet Mr. Henderson's claim for $1,000. Well, I'm afraid that was before we received the surveyor's report. A better estimate of the value of the trees that Mr. McNair took would be around $2,500. What are you trying to do, Ralph? Where would I get that much money? I can't afford to lose that much. It isn't right, Alf. Come on, Robbie. We can't do any more here. Anyway, you'd think it was McNair's land the way he acts. Exactly. Is that all, Constable? Would you adjourn the court for 15 minutes, then, please, Constable? Order, please. We declare the provincial magistrate's court now adjourned for 15 minutes.
Bobby, what's all the trouble? I thought you boys never let anything stand in the way of your curling. I can't explain Alf Henderson's attitude. Come to think of it, he doesn't talk much. That's always been Alf's trouble. Something had happened, he'd never talk it out with anybody, and wind up by doing something he's sorry for. Like fighting with his closest friend. You'll have your hands full. He's a good lawyer. I don't know much about him. You'll get a good chance to home now. That was a good lead. Young was a newcomer. Maybe all I had to do was explain things. I knew he'd be having lunch at the hotel. You'll be in Trayville tomorrow morning at 9.30. Room with bath. Right. Mr. Ralph Kelly. Thank you. Weekly, please. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Hello, Mr. Burke. I haven't seen you for about three months. That's right. The hotel looks the same. How's business? Oh, quiet this time of year. Keeping well? No complaints. Oh, by the way, I have a new line. You have? What are you selling now? Green fluorescent lights. Oh? Make the vegetables look fresh. Oh. <laughs> well, they are not. That's right. That's number 12, uh, Mr. Burke. Right, thank you. Good day. Hello, Mr. Roberts. Have they started yet? Yes, they have, but we're keeping a hot plate for you. Oh, fine, thank you. We couldn't get work on the Hi. Oh, Doc. Good day, Mr. Young. Hello. I'm a little late today. Well, better late than never. Thank you. Tell me, how do you uh, like Tate? It's all right. Not much court work. Well, there's not much court work in a town this size. How long have you been here? A year now? Nearly 18 months. Well, you've got to be a, here for 10 years before you're an old tea cider. I'm finding that out. By the way, must have you and Mrs. Young over sometime. We're at home most evenings. About that Henderson McNair matter. I've issued a writ on Henderson's behalf. But we don't have to proceed to trial. Why not? Mayor Sutlin? No. As a matter of fact, he's hired press. So is Henderson. Hmm. And he's got a good case. I'd say he'll get a judgment. I don't believe any court would award Henderson the amount he's asking. Seems reasonable to me. Look, Mr. Young, no matter how hard pressed Henderson is, he wouldn't want to ruin McNair. They're old friends. Well, I don't know anything about that. I only act for Henderson. Surely you're not acting in his best interests. If you win him some money, but lose him a friend. Maybe right now he needs the money. Gentlemen, this is an occasion to which the Canadian Club of Tayville has looked forward to for a long time. It has always been our ambition, our great desire to have Dr. Gurley, our local member, with us as a speaker at one of our regular meetings. But he has always pleaded that he would sooner talk with us than talk at us. But now we've got him where we want him as our speaker for this regular meeting. This was Turkey Fair Day a day set aside for the farmers who bring their turkeys into town for the big street sale. By tradition, the men usually do the buying. Well, I ran into Charlie Jackson, coming out of the Record and Times office. He had the new posters announcing the big bond spiel. Of course, at the moment, we didn't even have a team to enter. Charlie suggested dropping out, and I nearly agreed with him. It just shows you how much I've been slipping lately. Then it occurred to me that this bond spill couldn't have come at a better time. All I had to do was sell Charlie the idea of a little conspiracy. 
This turkey bond spiel is pretty important. I was just thinking about that. It's the biggest bond spiel of the year. You know, if our two friends should refuse to curl together, there isn't a thing we could do about it. Mm, no, I see what you mean. So, you'll get Henderson? You'll bring a fourth man? Right. Any phone calls? No, Mr. Robert. Would you get Alec McNair on the line for me? Hello, Mac. Robbie here. I'm afraid I have nothing good to report. You're being sued. Oh, no, don't worry. It'll be all right. Now, listen, this isn't business. But with you and Henderson out of the ring, we can't go on to curl. Well, Charlie's getting someone. I'd like you to turn out if you can. Oh, I wish you would. Will you do that, Matt? Oh, fine. See you at the ring. Cheerio. That story about the bear going over the mouth. You heard that, didn't you? <laughs> I wonder how he's getting along. Well, I hear he's having trouble. <laughs> I don't think he'd ever catch up to that. No, guy. no, you'd never, never get him. Still in tonight, Tom? Evening, Pete. Hi. Making out in the steel, Bill. Not bad. It's good to see you out, Al. Oh, I wouldn't want to miss this for anything. Who's your fourth man? Did you plan this? Okay, you can get somebody else to call. Wait, wait a minute. Just a second. It's all my fault, Alf. Mac didn't know a thing about it. All we care about is winning the bond spiel. We have a good chance. Now, how about it? You want to curl, Mac? Yes, I want to curl. Let's go, then. I don't think Jackson can repeat in this uh, year's turkey bond spiel, you No, it doesn't look like it. Sure is. We're going to have to eat beans instead of turkeys this year. Yes, sir. Boy, they're good turkeys, too. They made a good job last year. They want it, you remember? What an awful shot. Holy gee. Any time. You can tell 
Oh, by the way, they're playing out there. They're not doing a job that they should do. For a rink with a reputation, we didn't have much else. We curled like ladies' hairdressers. Johnny Durham's rink couldn't make a mistake. They put their stones smack into the circle with dismaying regularity. We got a granite into the house now and then, too, only to watch Johnny knock it out again. It was pretty plain what lay behind our meager efforts. Besides, we were up against the hottest rink in the club. Things couldn't have gone worse. I guess that was what got us mad. I wasn't going to be beaten if I could help it. Neither was Mac. The harder Durham's rink bore down, the harder we did. Alf Henderson most of all. Things began to break our way little by little. An intern that worked, a bit of sweeping that pulled a rock far enough into count. In the heat of the battle, we forgot all about trees, lawsuits, and lawyers. We found ourselves curling like Highlanders. Lovely shot. Want better cooperation now. You're working like a team. Okay, Mac, let's go. All right, Al. We'll have the turkeys yet. By the sixth then, we pulled even, but down we went once more. The match seesawed, but we knew we had a chance as we went into the final end. Jack, Frank certainly made a great comeback. All tied up now. Yes, you can go ahead and win it. Seats here, Mac. Thanks, so. That was a great game. That was a great game. Hey, Charlie. I sure like the way it ended. I've been a lawyer for 18 years, but no decision ever pleased me more. I heard the last of the matter on Sunday morning. Good day, Mr. Young. 
wonderful Sunday morning. Seems cold to me. You ought to take up a sport. You mean like curling? Ideal sport. Mr. Henderson has changed his mind. He's agreeable to settle for $1,250. That's good news. I'll advise him to pay that sum. Neat arrangement of yours, the turkey bonds feel. Wonderful game, Curly. Useful, anyway. Isn't that young elf lawyer? Mm-hmm. What'd you have to say to him? Oh, we talked about the weather, Charlie. And Curly. I didn't know he was a curler. Not yet. But I think you should go after him. I have a hunch he'll take up the game of Curly. Shall we go in? 